Hey guys, it's me Simone and it is time to make our book. Um, in the last video, uh, the series I made this one the cover. And I told you guys I was just going to do some collage work of some sheets instead of it. I don't sure if I made a video of this or not. I don't think I did. But now it's time to fold the paper up. put it in. Now I gotta make sure it's not determined the size. So I'm actually going to get a little cutter. This is like just a regular sheet of paper that is loaded. So let's just see how much I need to trim off. So this page paper in here needs to be a little bit more five and a half by say isn't gonna be eight. No, it's like a little a little less than seven and a half. Wait. Yeah. So um I need to cut my paper now. So what I've done is I folded my paper, but I'm just gonna cut this real quick and everything. I'm <laughs> choosing me. Alright guys, so now I'm going to cut my paper down um, to about 4 by 7 and a fourth, I think is how I'm, what I'm doing. Um, and so I've cut all my papers down. I had skipped it. I had a lot of footage of me cutting paper. Um, and now I'm going to actually count the paper and make sure all the backs, <clears throat> the folded part of the paper, are facing one direction. And now I'm actually going to go and punch the holes of one paper so I can know which um, each one's gonna need. Um, so I'm showing you a thumb tick, thumb tack, so you can use that instead of an awl if you don't have it. I'm going to put five papers in each signature, and a signature is just a um, a stack of folded papers that are together. And um, so I'm doing I think it's four signatures in this book. Let me see. I'm trying to get the book real quick to see. How many signatures are in this book? No, it's five. That's five pictures. No, this is like. So, yeah, there's 30 papers in here. No, it's 25. I said 30. It's 25 papers in here. Um, but you can always do less or more depending on how thick you want your book to get um, and how long you want to work in it. Um, so, I'm doing that right now. I'm sorting through them all. I think I am messing up and putting too many papers in one signature and I was like where's the paper at I know I cut enough paper um, so you can see I just touched a bone uh, like a bone folder that's good for like really creasing your folds and make them very sharp so now I'm gonna clip my paper together and pierce it my all I got is from doll not Dollar Tree <laughs> from eBay it's like 99 cent it's actually meant for leather but it works perfectly fine i'm i'm gonna punch four holes in here or pierce four holes in here i'm not measuring anything but you can measure paper and divide it by four and see where you need to um punch your holes um to get them evenly spaced but i really don't care as long as it's not too close to end your paper so it won't rip i do about like a, a four for an inch away and um that's what i do so i'm not really measuring anything here but um that's just me you can but i'm not but what i'm gonna do is get one of the papers that i already punched pierced and i'm gonna line it up on here and pierce those holes too so they're all pretty much the same holes you can have whatever you want it's really up to you um if you're gonna do a lot of binding books i do recommend you getting an all um you don't have to get a bone folder you can just get like scissors but it does help to have a designated tool if you're gonna make a lot of books I did find having it all useful. You can get them pretty cheap, as I got that for 99 cent off of eBay. Um, but it's up to you what you want to do. Um, but and of course I'm going to do this on my um, cutting mat so I don't um, damage anything else. So I think I'm almost 
I'm almost done actually trying to like fit everything in so the holes line up <coughs> so I moved a bunch of papers around so right now I'm going to lay the paper down and mark it on my um spine of my book to um know where to punch my hole pierce my holes I keep saying punch I'm just using an alcohol marker you can use a permanent marker or whatever you have I just grab it first thing I go inside and just mark my holes so I know where to um punch you can just, if you have your, your papers punched the same exact way, you don't have to do each signature. But since I have like all these wonky hole, uh, you know, I just kind of put it down. So let's talk about thread and needles real quick. I'm going to show you them, but I just want to talk about them. So the needle I have is a doll needle. It's meant for making, you know, dolls. Um... I got this from Walmart. It's a pack of like, I think it's a pack of five or so for like a dollar and some change. I love these needles for back binding because they're very long. They have a very nice hole and they're pretty sharp. Um, so they can actually pierce through paper on itself. And it's easier to bind this way instead of using a sewing machine with those big noodle needles than to have like a small needle. Um, so I'm going to go through and punch all these holes real quick. Um, but. I really really recommend that and then I am using I'm using my wax thread I'm showing you the needle right now it's pretty big it's about like a I think an inch and a half or two inches long it's really big and it fits thick thread like um, embroidery thread it fits perfectly so you're not limited on size of thread you can use I'm using wax thread here I got this of course eBay um, but you can use, I used uh, dental floss for the longest time, which will work perfectly fine for this. Right now, I think I'm messing with my music, so that's why I'm, like, gone. But, uh, is it, I think it was $3 for this, or, like, less than $3. I think it was $2 <coughs> for this wax thread. But you can use regular wax thread. You can even wax your own thread. But if that's too much, you can just go to, like, a Dollar Tree and get some, uh, get some, um, floss. And that would be perfect, too, too. And your book can smell all minty fresh. So I'm actually going to go in. Um, I'm going to go in. I think the. If you have four holes. So I'm going to go in the top hole. Then I'm going to go. It's like in out, in out, in out. So I'm going in the top hole. Then I'm going to go all the way to the back. Come in the second hole. Go out the third hole. Go back in the fourth hole. And then I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to go um, out the third hole, go back in the second hole, and then I can tie my thread and I'll be done. Um, there's different types of binding. You can look this up. It's a very simple binding. I think. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice now. Um, I don't know the name of this binding, but this is one I've always known. There's tons of different binding styles, so you can look that up if you're interested in getting a different one. But it's, it's really simple. You go in one hole out the other hole in the hole and then do the reverse so your thread can connect back to your um the thread you start off with so you can tie it but i'm actually going to punch the holes as i go because <laughs> my holes are not lined up they're all different ones i have different signatures facing different ways so the holes don't really match so you don't need to learn how to do this because i just like i don't know for me it doesn't even matter how the holes are, are because i said before it's not like they play a humongous part. As long as my threads is tight and everything, and I sewed it right, the holes don't really matter. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I actually kind of just woke up, so I like my voice is super weak right now. So I punch on my holes, and I'm gonna line it up to make sure the holes match the black dots that I've um, marked in my book. And it's gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go out to the back of the um, the book, and one in the first hole. Then I'm gonna go in the second hole, back out again on the third hole, and back in on the fourth hole. And then I'm going to go out on the third hole, in on the second hole, back to the middle, and then I'm gonna tie my thread. Um, how much thread you need? People say you do like I think you wrap your hand like three times. Your thread should be enough. I just guess to me, but I think 
you would have I'd rather have too much thread to little too little. You can always you don't have to cut your thread. You can just keep it connected to um the spool and then cut it when you're done. Um, but with this thread though, um, this rack thread, I have to tie it like I think three or four times, like knot it, because it does um, like to um, loose. See, I think I had a two, and, about two and a half wraps around my hand, and that was enough. But it's like you, you really have too much thread to too little, because that's an annoying process to try to um, fix. And you can always um, add a knot to the end of your thread if you're scared that you will um, pull too hard or pull too much thread. <coughs> I don't do that anymore, but you can. It does help if you're scared about this. Or you can just keep it connected to the spool or whatever. Um, but for the longest time I use, I just use floss to buy my books. And um, it works fine. Some floss, you know, does like, let's see. Like comes apart. I had one book I bound with floss, and the floss broke, and like the book was starting to fall apart. But that book was for um, it was like a get I know giveaway. It was a, a trade. We were trading junk journals, and sadly, um, that's what happened. And right now I'm. I'm loosening up the thread because I didn't have enough thread to come back in the second hole. <coughs> I'm sorry, I keep coughing. Like this, I had some coffee. I guess I didn't have any water yet, so my voice is just leaving me now. I mean, this one I had like, I haven't had that much thread on this one. That was two and a half wraps, so you might want to do closer to three, as I said. You rather have too much thread than too little. Um, but my biggest problem with, with um doing this is um uh, having my my pages tight. A lot of times they're still loose. You can see me fumble with that for a while because I was I didn't have enough thread. I mean I still had a good bit, but it was still a little, a little less than I like to have. And you see, the, if you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but the thread was pretty loose on that one. So I have, this is my last signature right here. I'll show you through like every single signature is gonna have to go through. I had to glue that little flap of collage paper down eventually, but I'm ignoring it right now. Um, but you, as I said, you can do a lot of things with this. Um, for me, and I don't really care how the spacing is, but if you want your pages to be as close to each other as possible, like different signatures, you can actually pl print like pre-plan this out so that will happen, and you don't have like this big gap. Of your spine showing between your pages um but to me you know as long as i can paint on it you know it doesn't matter and uh, of course the thicker your paper the harder it'll be to like just pierce it with your r or whatever you use i mean you can pierce it with this needle with your needle but i just i'm telling you guys you need to get yourself if you're gonna do this and you have a sewing machine nothing um that's why i didn't use my sewing machine um the, getting yourself a doll needle is like a really good thing to have. Like I just have not gone back to my small little Colty needles. Um, actually, I think I went somewhere. I think my brother wanted to go somewhere, and he was like asking me if I could take him. So I think that's where I went. Um, this whole time, like my brother came around, he's like, "What you're doing? You want to go here?" I'm like, "Okay, let me finish this up real quick." And actually, I, I saw a lot of the videos kind of different scenes. I like stopped here, did this here. But I mean, this process doesn't take too long. I think it takes me um, I don't even like I mean, it depends how many signatures you're doing too. But this process could take like maybe an hour or two to do a whole book. It, it depends on a lot of things. But I have no problem with it. And um, that's going to wrap everything up, so I hope you guys enjoyed and liked 
this little tutorial on how to make your book and stay tuned and I hope you try it. Hey guys, it's me Simone and why well, I just finished making the book so welcome back so here it is this has 20 pages in it it's a lot of pages you don't have to do 20 pages you can do less i kind of want this to get chunky so i'm doing 20. um and i made signatures of of course uh there are four signatures no sorry five signatures of four pages each um you don't have to do bound you can do uh there's some other method I didn't show you as a video of this one, but I'll show you for well. But uh, depending on your stitching and how you do it, you can make sure your grips are closer together or far apart. There's a big old gap of the spine you can see. Or they can be like right on, on each other so you can see them better. And it's up to you. I, I really didn't care. The next thing I have is this method. It's similar to the method I did for my, this is a, my inventory book. It's everything that I buy and stock. Um, and just in checks, I know, so. Um, but as I was saying, this is like a summer method. So this method, I got string, I decorated the cover, glued string on both sides, and then I punched holes around in the paper that goes around the thread. And so instead of punching into a cardboard, you would just punch your holes and make sure they go around the parts, and then you would stitch over it now in this method when I do it I always make sure I try to catch the stitching I didn't do it in the first one because I always forgot but I catch the stitching kind of makes it closer you want book kind of like this one all of them are cut so yeah but you can do the string method you can do whatever method you want to they lay, they lay really flat you can always I like this method because you can scoot them closer to your pages this is more flexible because this is done with string um, and this is done with cardboard and I just cut out openings so see yeah, this will go so I have two books and of course this one is made with the Nina exact vellum bristle paper and I don't know what color this is I think it's like tan or something I don't know and this one is done with embroidery thread embroidery thread and this one is made with the Michaels white cardstock. I wanted to make something reasonable and cheap and um whatever but uh, easy to get and this was only 65 pounds or 176 GSMs and it was only five dollars for 50 sheets so I used 20. Uh and then this one is only 15. So you have an option what you could do. Book. So in the next Series, we're going to start actually working in this and doing some, have some fun with this. So if you guys didn't see my video of how I decorate this cover, go check that one out of me decorating this journal, um, journal and we can get started with our creative art journaling. Uh, well my book's going to get pretty chunky because I mean it's already kind of thick now and it doesn't even have any paint in it. But it's up to you how many pages you want to do, and then your pages don't have to be bulky or nothing, or like thicker with them tissue or collage stuff. So I mean, you could just use this one forever, but you make sure your spine is big enough for what you want to do. Just kind of think that I a good idea. The other thing about me with stitching is sometimes I don't have a tight stitch, but it's okay. Let's make it get better at. It. But uh, I'm so tired. And I have couple books to work out. Of course, this is going to be my YouTube only book, so we're going to work on this on YouTube. And then the other ones um, I have, I have a couple junk books and art journals. I can use whenever, whatever. Just so we can kind of have a little book. So if you already purchased your book, then you're ready for the next step, which is to start actually using it. So I hope you guys stay tuned for that, and I hope you enjoy the video. Keep crafty, guys. Bye.